If you love old PlayStation 1 games like for example Resident Evil, I've got something for you. Today we'll make a movement known exactly from this type of games. Hello fantastic people, it's Pity and let's get straight to it. We'll start with this very simple scene. Here I have some props and this little guy. We add to him the character controller component, which is the secret ingredient making this implementation very very simple. Basically it handles for us all the difficult parts related to the character movement. Now I need to adjust a little bit the sizing and position of the collider. And now I'm creating the player controller script. And of course I drop it onto the character. Inside of it I add the reference to the character controller so we can reference it later. As our character will be moving I also need a field to store the speed. And to handle the input we'll need a input action reference. This will allow us to simply drop the input action into the field in the inspector. All the magic will be happening in the update method. Inside of it we'll have two methods, handle input and move. Let's create a private field to store the input value. As it will store the horizontal and vertical movement it has to be of type vector2. Then we simply read the value of type vector2 from the input action. As in the future we may want to have some more input actions, I'm going to rename mine from input action to move action. Because we want the diagonal movement to be of the same speed as horizontal and vertical, we need to remember to normalize the input. Now let's create the move method. Inside of it we create a velocity vector. To create it we use our input vector multiplied by speed. And of course for the movement to work correctly we need to remember to remap the input y component to the z component of the velocity. Because we don't want our character to be floating in the air, when it's not grounded we simply set the y of the velocity to the physics gravity y. And now finally we use the move method of the character controller to perform the actual movement. And because we want the movement to be frame rate independent we multiply the velocity by time delta time. Now I set the reference to the character controller component. Then I set the speed to 2 and then of course I set the move action using the move action coming pre-configured for us with the URP 3D template. Fantastic! Everything seems to be working as expected. Let's now handle the rotation. Inside of our script I add a private field of type quaternion. Then inside the move method I set it to the value of quaternion.lookRotation and as the parameter I use our velocity. Why? Because our velocity is the direction in which our character is moving. After we move our character we will be rotating it, so let's add the rotate method inside the update method. Oh, and of course let's add the rotation speed field which will be configurable via inspector. Now it's time for our rotate method. To make our character rotate we simply set the rotation of its transform using the quaternion spherical lerp. As the initial rotation we use the current rotation, then as the target we use our target rotation, and then we control the rotation amount using the rotation speed multiplied by time delta time. If you would like me to make a video explaining a little bit about quaternions, simply comment rotations under the video. If there will be enough people interested I will make sure to create something for you. Now we need to set the rotation speed in the inspector and we're ready to test it. We have a little problem. When we stop our character is moving back to the original rotation. Let's address that. It's also a great moment to add some animations. I did it using Mixamo. If you need some good quality free animations that's the best place to get them. And in this video I explain how to prepare your character for them and how to use them in Unity. Let's start by fixing our rotation problem. I add a new boolean field called isMoving. 
And then if our move input magnitude is larger than 0.1, I set it to true. Then inside of our rotate method, I make sure the rotation happens only if our character is moving. In case you have set up some animations, this is the best time to connect them. Let's do it quickly. I add a serialized field for the animator and inside of our update method, I use a new method called animate. Let's create it now. Inside of it, I simply set the animator's bool is moving to the value of our field is moving. That's of course because of the way I have set up the animations in my animator. In case you don't know what is happening, I do have a small tutorial about animations over here. Fantastic! Everything works as expected. Um, almost. Our character is able to walk on some of the items. Let's fix that. The character controller handles slopes and steps for us, so the only thing we need to do is to modify some values. First, I decrease the slope limit to 10 and then set the step offset to something very small. And voila, all fixed. Now let's work on one more thing. You may want your character to move in relation to the camera. That means if you press W or up arrow, you want the character to move exactly away from the camera. To do that, first we'll need a reference to our camera's transform. Then, in the move method, we want to store two directions. Forward to know where's the front of the camera and right to know exactly where's the right of the camera. Then, because the camera may be facing a little bit downwards, we want to change the Y component to zero. Because we want all the calculations to be correct, we want now to normalize the new vectors. Now we need to construct the velocity slightly differently. Because we want the vertical input to handle the front and back movement, we multiply the camera front by the move input Y. Then to handle the left and right movement, we add the camera right multiplied by move input X. Then we normalize it and multiply it by speed. And done. The only thing that's left for us is to set the camera to something more dramatic. Here's a little tip from me. You can set the view as you want in the scene, then you right click on the camera and select align with view. This will place the camera such a way to show everything exactly as you see it in the scene window. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a fantastic day! Love you and bye bye.